Hello and welcome to how I play my level 90 Shadow Knight. So this video is mostly going to cover how it's played. Uh, if you want to see how I actually play it in, uh, in action, if you will. It, uh, the Hobbs and Friends series on my channel is uh, from 1 to uh, level 90 so far of how I play this character. Along with my uh, group of characters here in a boxing situation, but primarily from here. So with that said, this video carries on from the last how I played my level 85 and so on and so on character uh, for the Shadow Knight. And uh, we're going to go over spells. We're going to talk about some changes I did to the hot bars here. And we'll talk about the rotation that I'm doing. And uh, I got the log parser going so we can do a little bit of uh, combat dummy here. I got the uh, level 90 guy right out there. So uh, spells... Uh, I am running all the rank 2 spells uh, that you can get for House of Thule. Uh, as a th House of Thule goes from 85 to 90, so that is where they come from. So all the spells that I use are rank 2. I don't know if I wasted my time on the other ones. Uh, but Confrontation of Power is my uh, bread and butter, <laughs> if you will. This is a very important spell to land on every target you fight. Uh, it gives you a armor class bonus for one minute, along with giving you an increased hatred. So uh, you want to cast that. You get it at level 87, so uh, get that as soon as possible. Gorgon Spear. Now, uh, this is just a fast cast high damage spell. I just do it because it's, I mean, look at this, right? Instantaneous. Uh, spell damage, 10,000 damage right there. Uh, it might add to the hatred a little bit. It might add to just my overall DPS. We'll see how all that goes here in a second. And then I do uh, Malthasius's Bite. Uh, so this is our, uh, so what, are you, what would you call it? A mana tap, if you will. Uh, this does 698 damage, but it returns mana to the group. How much mana? I don't know. I, I didn't look up the specifics on this, but... I've been running this spell line for a while. I like it. It's uh, you know fairly quick cast, not as fast as I'd like. It does 1500 damage here on a crit, and you can see that it uh, returned mana to everybody, but it's hard to tell because uh, I don't know the number. Next up, we have a touch of Iglum. <laughs> some of these some of these spell names. Uh, so this is a life tap. It rips. Uh, life from the target so it does 1926 damage life tap but it increases my hit points temporarily with a temporary hit point buff so if we cast this uh, i'm currently at 107 uh 469 hit points i cast this i get it uh was it four six out oh, god i already forgot the number i think it was like 200 300 hit points it didn't go into the thousands so a little, a little extra hit points there, not going to, you know, nothing to complain about, right? You get that extra hit points. I mean, I'm at 107,000 hit points, so that's pretty good. Uh, next, we have a Dire Accusation, which is a just a fast cast, uh, high, high damage, 4,900 life tap. And you can see here, fairly fast cast, what is that, 0.85 seconds? So, you know, 10,000 damage, pretty quick. You'll see when I do the rotation here in a minute how fast these actually go. And then uh, we have Touch of Dial Gem. <laughs> uh, Dial Gem, uh, whatever, however you say that. Uh, this is another life tap, does 2,500. You'll see I do a lot of life taps on the Shadow Knight. And I think that's, I think that's how you're supposed to play it. I, I feel like that's the way it's played uh, just because it makes it so much easier. Uh, nice life tap. It's got a nice cooldown on it, so it's you can't spam it, but it's there. Next up, I have Terror of Rare Carolyn. Uh, this is a uh, jolt spell, I guess is the best but we call it. It is an instant cast hatred. So instantly, I will have more hatred than anybody else when I cast this, right? Just boom, instantaneously cast it, right? Nice little spell there. Get it at six. It's only sixty-six mana. It doesn't, it doesn't even cost anything really. It's free. 
Uh, then I have uh, Blood of Malthasis. Now, this is a damage over time, and I don't really cast damage over time spells, but I, in my rotation, I can't get another <laughs> life tap in or anything else inside the, the time that I have. I'm already cutting it pretty close, and uh, I sometimes I have to have quick time from my bard to actually be able to cast all the spells in the single rotation. But... Uh, this is a dot, just in case I do need a dot for some reason to kind of help with extra damage. But as of late, I have not needed it at all. So I expect that spell to be changed out in a future video. Same with Dire Restriction. Uh, this is the, the disease version. So the other one's the poison version. This is the disease version. Now, this one has a little bit of benefit, right? It kind of cripples the enemy, right? It lowers their strength by 106 and their armor by uh, 140, and does 1200 damage, you know, like, we can cast these, right, let's cast both of them, like, they're insta-cast, and you can see here, right, so that one's doing 4100 a tick, 3900 a tick, after AAs and other modifiers are applied to the spell, so, I mean, it's not, it's not terrible damage, but the way I play, I just, don't have mobs living long enough to warrant casting the spell at all, right? It's, I mean, 14,000 crit is pretty nice, but it's just not worth it for me. Uh, then I have Loathing. Uh, loathing is a point-blank AoE uh, jolt taunt, right? So if I cast it here, you see that it hit all of those and all of those over there. So it, it's a pretty good range. And uh, something I've been doing lately is pulling lots of mobs and just AoEing them. <laughs> uh, well, AoE taunting, tanking them, but uh, single target destroying them. I, I'm not 100% sold on the AoE nuking yet for the way I'm multiboxing, but uh, this is an invaluable spell. I keep it up. And when we get into the, uh, the hot bar section, I'll talk about some AAs that we have to do the same thing, but I like to keep the spell up because you can run out of spells, uh, run out of AOE taunts, right? Uh, then I have Stubborn Stance, so this is our uh, stance. <laughs> this gives us more hit points for a limited amount of time, so this gives us an extra 6,700 hit points. And it decays over time, so I think you like takes duration right the duration five minutes 40 seconds so if you cut that in half you're going to get half of that with you know full and then over that second half it is going to go down that's just my thought on how it works now it's recast time is uh da, 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 let's cast it real quick let's see so if i cast it the recast time is two minutes and 30 seconds same as the duration now with the double duration, you can recast it before you lose hit points. If you if you recast it every two minutes and thirty seconds, I'm not that good, uh, but I cast it whenever I need it. And then uh, Gorgon's skin. Now this is a uh, what is the best way to do this? So it's right over here, right? Uh, does it have a better description? No, it doesn't. So it gives us charges and it lowers our damage per hit, right? So it takes a little bit of the damage off the top. Uh, you get 42 charges. I try to cast this as much as I can, but uh, it just depends on if I remember to cast it. I haven't noticed a big difference between it, but I would assume like on a difficult encounter, it would be beneficial. All right, so that is like all the spells I use in my everyday spell list, right? So then we have... Uh, our pet, the current pet is Minion of Fear. I keep this up at all times. He's a nice little dot, if you will. And then we have uh, Gift of uh, Dialogum is the pet Haste. I don't even know if it's on there. Voice of Thule on my pet. Jeez. What did I do there? Uh, there we go. Gift of Dialogum is uh, it's a two minute, a two hour duration. So it's a nice little pet Haste. Get it out there. Get it on your pet. Other than that, I don't cast any other spells. I don't even change these out. I do the pet, I do that. Uh, all of our self buffs are contained, as far as I know, inside of Dark Lord's Unity Asia. 
for the hit points and uh, Bazia for the mana. Uh, Azia being what I use right now, so this gives us pretty much everything in a single spell. And it's, uh, it's an AA you get at starting, I think, 75 is when we first introduced this. And it just upgrades every five levels, right? So the current rank is level 90. At 95, I'll get another rank with all the spells from 90 to 95 in it. And it, you know, just buffs you. Simple. Brain dead. You don't have to think about it. All right, so hot bars. So if you've watched all the other videos, these hot bars are pretty much the same, except I've added an AOE taunt button here, which uh, does alt activate 80, uh, 822 and 749, which are explosion of hatred and explosion of spite. Uh, respectively. Now these are just point blank AOE um, taunting abilities, right? So like uh, this one does eight eight opponents, 8,500 hatred to each of them. Eight opponents, 8,500 hatred, hatred to each of them, right? They have a 45 and a 45 second refresh. Now, why do I have all these on one button? <laughs> one, I was in the videos, if you watched in uh, Hobbs and Friends, I'm uh, I'm going like this and I'm clicking on each of these every time. Now I've switched it to a six on my my uh, keyboard so I can just hit it on there, and it'll do whichever is activated, right? Uh, as long as I keep the AAs relevant past 111, when we stop getting AAs or 115, whatever it is, auto granted, and I make sure I sp I continue to put points in these, it will be. Uh, uh, but these still seem to have a level cap on them, uh, so I'm not 100% sure. I know the Paladin version of these had a level cap on them, so something to keep in mind. And then, uh, see, I have Snare there, which I never cast. Uh, my Multibind button, uh, which is the rotation, is uh, pretty much the same as it was. And then I did add a Burn button. Uh, it's not a full burn yet. We don't have all the abilities to date. Uh, but... Uh, I did get Spire of the Reavers, and uh, that's the only one. <laughs> like, we have other spells, right? We have uh, Visage of Death, uh, but I like to manually activate this. This turns us into an undead, increase our base melee damage by 215%. Uh, Leech Touch, which is kind of my, oh my gosh, I'm going to die, in the sense of like lay of, ha lay of Hands is that for a Paladin, I use Leech Touch as lay of hands for I'm about to die. I'm going to get, you know, what, 25,000 health real quick. And then Paladin, or not Paladin, Shadow Knights also have Harm Touch, which does 106,000 damage and does 28 over time. So it's a big damage, pretty much kills most things I'm fighting if I'm going to it, right? It just single target kills them. Uh, but Spire of the Reaver from the Burn is... Uh, a very nice spell so this uh we got this i believe at night before 90 because we have 12 ranks of it so i don't know when we originally got it uh but i i didn't worry about a burn button i still don't really need to there's like certain situations where i have too many mobs in camp and i just don't think the shaman can keep up and so i, I try to burn them down as fast as possible now this what this spell does is it increases our combat prowess by 100 by for one minute and 30 seconds uh it also increases stuff for passively but it's so here we go increases our chance to deal uh critical damage by 20 percent critical direct damage by 100 percent critical damage over time is by 200 percent minimum damage of my melee attack by 128 points Increases my melee avoidance and my chance to parry and my armor class. This is an insane little buff. Uh, some of the spires, they help everybody in the group. This one uh, seems to be a selfish one. It only helps me, so keep that in mind. And then I have a Projection of Doom, which I also have in my multibind. I'll probably take it out of here. Uh, I just needed something on that line, <laughs> but... Uh, it summons a, a level 90 projection that will just absorb hatred from all the mobs and then it's, give it to me when it dies or when it runs out. So it's pretty nice. And then we have a Forceful Rejuvenation, which just resets our spells, uh, except for Twin Cast, which I don't believe we have. So it is uh, pretty nice there. And then I use our Breastplate, which is use item 17 there 
which uh, looks here summons a sword of corruption this sword will life tap up to four nearby hated enemies for 7500 damage every five seconds up to a maximum of 20 strikes you will receive this back as healing so <laughs> uh again you know this is a uh, very strong ability and uh it's very nice to have so it's it's in my burn typically like i i don't know why i didn't put it down here i usually put them uh all the buttons right here so i can kind of see what's active and what's not active right uh, but you know you click that it's going to life tap everything i'm going to be getting more healing more healing more healing so that's just fantastic uh, there uh so that's the burn button that's the only thing else that's different on that line uh let's see here nothing else has changed here dots is still cast those two dots uh so the multi bind uh which i'm gonna just start calling rotation because that's what it is uh, what I do is I taunt, I defy. So defy absorbs the damage from the next two melee attacks that strike me. Now, uh, defiance two kind of gives us a little bit more information on what this does. Braces your body to withstand the next two incoming melee or spell. Oh my gosh, get rid of that icon. Uh, spell attacks, reducing the damage done by 90% for six seconds or until 10,000 damage has been absorbed. So very nice. I use that on cooldown. It's very beneficial. Then I do uh, co uh, Confrontation of Power, uh, Gorgon Spear, uh, see here, Althasius's Bite, Terror, and then the three life taps. Now I do them in that order specifically because the last life tap sometimes does not trigger. And that is because I have so many abilities in there. Uh, now, when I get quick time from my bar, which increases the cast time and all the all the stuff, uh, haste related, right? It is uh, it is able to land. So it just depends. I do click quick time on cooldown on my bard, uh, just because. But it, it just depends. So that's the rotation. Then it goes into chattering bone, which is our swarm pet. Bite of Chaos, which is just another direct damage spell, and restores some mana and health. Ageless Enmity, uh, this is just the taunt, does 1500 hate. And then Projection of Doom, which we talked about before, uh, which I have it in the burn. This just uh, generates a bunch of hatred and then transfers it to me at a certain point. All right, uh, so that's the burns. We talked about Harm Touch, Leech Touch, Visage of Death. Talking about the AoEs, we have Harm Shield, which is our invulnerability. I've yet to use this. And, then, and that's probably like more on me for not using it because I have died, right? It's not like I've, I've played I've played this character from level one and I haven't died, right? Uh, but, you know, you just it's, you get caught up in the moment and you die. You know, you, just, you forget to click it. But if you, you can remember to click it, you might not die. <laughs> All right, and then uh, we have dis disable weapon stance. Now, I have weapon stances enabled. <laughs> um, when I played my paladin from uh, you know around this level, I could not go without a, you know a uh, shield most of the time. I have not had that issue. I am doing uh, pure weapon, you know, two-handed proficiency this whole time. I do have a one-hander and stuff like that in my bag, but I I just haven't used it. And uh, I haven't had any issue, but this will allow me to disable weapon stances so I won't be losing my, uh, so like you, you lose, uh, I believe you lose combat stability or something like that. One of these, <laughs> one of these, uh, one of these AAs makes it so you can't, uh, no, it's bold attacks, I think it is. No, not bold attacks, that's the nature one. One of them lowers your combat is a stability or something like that, so you don't tank as well. I haven't hit that yet. Uh, if I have... Uh, oh yeah, there it is. Reduces my uh, dodge and parry incoming attacks. There you go. As well as my armor class. So there is a debuff there. Now, if I, let's say we... Uh, so we look at my armor class, right? I'm at uh, 20, 2147. If I go to my one-hander here... 
25. So it's like a 400, you know, 400-ish AC difference. And uh, yeah, huge attack difference too. So it just depends on how you can play and how you want to play. I prefer two-hander right now because it's it does a lot more damage and helps with that. Uh, then we have, you know, let's see here, Scourge Skin. So this is a damage shield that we can add. It's 100 point or 100 hits for three minutes. Uh, it's pretty nice. I don't know how much. Let me see here. As now, I haven't been hit by. I haven't been hit since I logged on. All right, so there we go. <laughs> uh, it's you know you cast it. It's on 100 strikes, five minutes, whatever goes first. I like to do it as much as possible, but it's it's hard to remember. And then uh, Voice of Thule is our uh, hatred generation modifier we can add to us or to someone else. You can cast this on anybody. You saw it on my pet because I guess I had the wrong thing targeted when I cast it last time. Uh, by 20%. Uh, to, in contrast, the Paladin gets one that lowers the group's threat by 20%. And the, uh, the Shadow Knight gets one that increases a target's threat. So... Very interesting uh, ability here. So if like you're in a raid situation, you can cast this on a warrior. If you're uh, you know having issues holding aggro for some reason, which you shouldn't as a shadow knight, um, ca casting this will uh, help you with that. And it's it's a fairly quick cast. You're not going to do it during combat, but it's a 17 minute duration at this point. So it, it's it's not like it was early on. We had to recast it every like five ten minutes. Uh, let's see here. Next row. And then I have these bandolier buttons for just swapping my uh, one-handed and two-hand, depending on, uh, you know, what I need. I have yet to use them, but I keep them there at all times. Then I have a pet, pet macro to so summon my pet, pet and the buff pet for him. Uh, then a familiar. Uh, this familiar is uh, key rings. This is, a, you know, not that great. I found it in my bags. Uh, apparently I had bought the Ring of Scale or something. It's a collector's Edition, I just had, a, had it available. All it does is give me a damage shield. Now, later on, there's better familiars that give you like thousands of hit points, but uh, we don't have that yet. So, And then finally, uh, Dark Lord's uh, Unity right here, which is just our self-buff for getting all those self-buffs and stuff. All right, uh, that is pretty much all the spells and whatnot. And everything I use, like everything I, I, I talk about is in, you know, in a macro or it's in something like that, right? So let's just go into combat here. So I'm going to do my rotation, which is hitting four, right? I'm just hitting four on my keyboard. That's the only button I'm pushing. It's the only thing I do. You'll see my pet uh, activated because it's in one of these macros here, right? So just using everything there, you can kind of see where this of the rotation is in uh, how this goes, right? And how it repeats things, right? Just depends on what's up at a time. And there we go. We Did we get all the buff spells? I don't think that last one hit yet. Yeah, so you can see. It, it's hard to get the last one to trigger. The touch of the uh, Diglin. Oh, there it goes. It triggered. It just takes a little while, and that's, you know, what it takes. But when I have quick time going from the bard, it's a little bit faster. So we'll do this for a few more seconds, just so we can get uh, a little bit of parsing data, so I can show how much damage we're doing and stuff like that. But you can see here, like, the melee, I'm hitting for about 6,000-ish normal hits, 19,000 crits. Um, and then a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going here, right? Now, obviously, the training dummy doesn't, you know, we don't get hit, but uh, for practical reasons, it helps the video. All right, so there we go. Stop that and back off. All right, bring that in. All right, so combat dummy Beza right here. Oh wait, hold on, let me fix this. Uh, it did not set the pet as my as my pet. I think he's fixed now. All right, key log parser. There we go. So you can see now, 
we have uh, Hobbs's pet and stuff. So in that, uh, what is that? 94 seconds. I did 15,000 DPS and uh, 14, uh, 1.4 million damage. Now my average crit was 590 or 5,900. Max hit was 2,700 or 27,000. I hit 504 times, right? Tanking summary isn't going to show anything because I didn't get hit, but if we look at the healing summary, I healed myself for what seems to be about 4,000, so it's not that much. I don't know why it doesn't, it doesn't show the, uh, the life taps when they do zero heal, so it's kind of unfortunate there, but you know, it's damage, right? So Geb Iker is my summoned pet and Hobbs's pet is my swarm pets. So you can see the swarm pets are a significant amount of damage, right? So 8% 8, 8 of the damage total was swarm pet damage. And then the other pet only did at 5,600. So it is, you know, it's it's not, or 56,000. It's not a terrible a lot, but, you know, it's, it is what it is. You can kind of see here, if we look into 80, not 80 BS lifetime. Uh, da, da, da. DPS breakdown, Shadow Knight. There you go. You can see where all that damage is coming from. So, so my melee damage is significant. Uh, and then you have everything else into all the other things. So we got a few procs here. Uh, looks like we have Tiger Maw and stuff like that on us. From my Shaman, if we look at direct damage, you can see each of the different spells and how they do. Uh, I'm using EQ Log Parser, uh, whatever the latest version is, 2.244. And it's really nice at breaking this down and kind of showing, you know, the differences and all that kind of stuff like that. Now, uh, what I'll do after I do all, uh, all the classes, how I play for level 90, I'll go and do another video where I show par we, we talk about parsing and go fight some current level mobs or something like that to kind of show... Uh, this in action, but you know, this is kind of what it is in a controlled environment and how all that works, but I feel like I'm doing it right. I <laughs> I haven't had anybody tell me I'm doing it wrong yet on the Shadow Knight. Now, I've gotten some comments on some other classes and stuff like that there where I've, I've you know, taken some of that into interest, but uh, I haven't been told I'm doing it wrong yet, uh, so I feel like this is the way the class was meant to be played and, you know, life tapping you know, and using a two-hander. I don't feel like Sword and Shield is needed on a Shadow Knight. I haven't needed it from uh, 1 to 90 yet. And, you know, we'll see how far that goes, right? Um, now, I am I am over-geared, I would say, probably. But this is live. Uh, I am wearing the Crypt Hunters gear, which is TBM gear, which is not too much more than House of Thule Tier 4. So that's 1,800 hit points. If you look at my bard who has the house oh, 1600, so it's not a whole big difference, you know. It's it's like 208 points per piece, if that. Uh, there's some other stats I, I lose out on by using this gear, like the all these things here are like pitiful, right? But these ones are a little bit better, so it just depends. So, but uh, yeah, that kind of seg segues us into gear. Uh, I am using uh, the full TBM gear, uh, I don't feel like I need to switch it out yet. Uh, I know at 106, I will be switching to Conflagrant gear and then uh, whatnot from there. But for the most part, I can, as long as I have uh, more remnant, uh, remnant tokens, uh, remnants of tranquility here, I will be able to continue using this gear. Uh, it's getting more and more expensive as I go uh, to keep it in peace. I think each AUG is 300 and something now. And uh, so it gets it gets more and more expensive as you go. But if you can't do that, you can get uh, the House of Thule tier four gear from the uh, uh, Gribbles merchant. So if you if you've leveled up using uh, Gribbles, right, you can use Marks of Valor. If I have any left, I know these characters. Yeah, the Marks of Valor here from uh, doing Gribbles missions and all those uh, missions from that expansion. Uh, the Call of the Forsaken. It's, uh, you can buy the Tier 4 gear for uh, pretty much every expansion. 
uh, like the high the best gear you can from each expansion on those vendors so you can kind of do that skip some of the farms that you might have to do otherwise but uh it's, it is an option uh well i guess one thing we did not talk about is disciplines but uh, they haven't really changed <laughs> so uh we have two defensive disciplines we have mantle and carpas uh, mantle is the better one it lasts it absorbs 35 percent of the damage uh for one minute and does uh up to 392,000, whereas Carapace does 20% up to 200,000. Uh, then we have Defy, which we already talked about, which is the mini little uh, two-hit defensive thing we get. And then that's it. Like, there's no, there's not much else to it, right? Uh, we have Respite is just an yeah, endurance regen. Uh, but I run a, I run a Beast Lord and a Bard, so I don't have to really worry about that at all. Uh, Last Breath is a feign death, but I've never cast it. So, I think that kind of covers everything there. Uh, if I missed anything, let me know. Uh, I will definitely cover it in the level 95 video, uh, or the level 100 video, depending on <laughs> what comes first. But, that is how I play my level 90 Shadow Knight. Thank you very much for watching, and please have a fantastic day.